nations come, O cornerstone that binds in one. Refresh the hearts that long for you. Restore the broken, make us new. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and each other. Together we pray, come Lord Jesus, for without you we are lost in our sin, the things we have done, the things we have left undone, the sins we are aware of, and the sins known only to you. Come, Lord Jesus, to forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that our lives would reflect the holiness you came to give us. Amen. Dear friends, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn. Savior of the nations, come. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. 
take away the hindrance of your sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading this morning is from Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judea, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. The second reading this morning is from Hebrews. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me, in burnt offerings and sin offerings, for you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and, burnt, and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he said, See how I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Please be seated. This time I would like to invite the children up front for children's time, and the rest of us will sing. Come on up, kids. Raindrops, oceans, lakes, and rivers, welcome, child. Father's father's brother, sister, welcome, child, come. When the world feels wide around you, when the dark of night surrounds you, we are here to tend and guide you. Welcome, children of God. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad that you're here today. This is a very exciting Sunday. It is the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent. We have all four candles lit over in our Advent wreath over there. And you know when all four of those candles are lit, that Christmas is just around the corner. This is the last Sunday before Christmas. Very exciting Sunday. Are you excited? 
I bet you're excited. There are lots of different ways that people show that they're excited. Sometimes they have great big smiles when they're so very excited. We can't really see each other's smiles very well with these masks on, I know. But that's one way people show that they're excited. Sometimes people make noise when they're excited. They might squeal or yell. I'm not really a noise maker when I'm excited. I don't really squeal very much, although there was one time when I got tickets to go see you too that I did squeal a little bit. Uh, another time that, or another way that people show that uh, they're excited is to jump up and down with joy. Maybe something wonderful happens. Maybe the Seahawks make a great play, and people will jump up and down. They'll be, they'll be so, so happy. They'll jump for joy, right? Maybe, you're, maybe some of you guys are jumpers. Well, in our gospel reading for this morning, we hear of a very exciting time. Mary goes to visit her Aunt Elizabeth, and Mary has baby Jesus in her stomach, in her tummy, and Elizabeth has John the Baptist in her tummy, and everybody is so very excited. When Mary arrives, Elizabeth makes a loud cry. We don't know if it was a squeal or a shriek or what it was, but she made a loud noise. She was so happy that Mary was there carrying the baby Jesus in her, in her tummy. And even John the Baptist, who was still in his mom's stomach, he was jumping for joy inside his mother's womb. So much excitement. And why are they so excited? They're so excited because Jesus would soon be born. Now, I know there's a lot to be excited about this time of year. School's out. That's pretty exciting. And there are probably presents under the tree that are showing up. And maybe there's family that you look forward to visiting. There's lots to be excited about this time of year, to be sure. But the most exciting thing of all for us here at church, the most exciting thing for us as Christians is that soon, very soon, we will be celebrating the birth of Jesus. And he is the greatest gift of all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is certainly an exciting Sunday as we get closer and closer to Christmas. Now we hear the story of Mary and Elizabeth and the babies in their wombs jumping for joy as John did. Uh, We pray that you would fill us with the excitement of knowing that you are near to us even now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right, before you go scampering off, I don't see them here. Oh, they're there. Okay, Peg is here. We have a special thing where Lydia Circle has some stuff left over from the bazaar, and they like to offer that to the kids for free uh, so that you can pick something out for your parents for Christmas. If you want to go do that, Miss Peg will take you down the hall to the education wing, and if you want to pick something out and wrap it, you'll have a little gift to give to your family uh, when Christmas comes. Sheila will help too. There you go. Thanks, guys. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of the most cherished and precious memories of my life are from when my wife was carrying our three unborn children. I remember the first time our first son kicked uh, in the womb. We were at a Mariners game and Amy had just polished off a bunch of garlic fries. That was the first time uh, she, she felt uh, Luke kick in the womb. We don't know if he was cheering for the Mariners or if he liked garlic fries or what it was exactly, but we very much remember that first time our first son kicked at what was then Safeco Field. With our second child, I very much remember lying on the couch in our parsonage in Winlock in my previous call And Peter was a summer baby, and I remember the windows being open, and uh, every so often Amy would wordlessly come and and take my hand and lift my hand and place it on her stomach so that I could feel where and when Peter was kicking. With our third child, I remember going to the symphony. The Seattle Symphony was performing with a choir in Olympia. Uh, Part of their uh, program included Box Magnificat, Uh, and it was late in Amy's pregnancy. She was seven months along, and she was wearing a little black dress. Looked like she was trying to sneak a basketball into the concert. Um, She was proudly protruding in that little black dress with seven months' worth of baby underneath, and she was at that stage in her pregnancy where she was radiant. She was just glowing. And it wasn't just me being the doting husband. She cut through the crowd like a rock star or a queen. 
I'm not kidding. People were actually pointing to her and smiling. Uh, as I mentioned, part of the pr pr uh, program was Box Magnifica. So people were already excited about pregnant ladies, and now they got to see one in real life. She was the star of the intermission. These are some of my most precious memories, some of the greatest blessings of my life. In our gospel reading for this morning, we hear some of the most cherished memories of the Christian church. Many reputable biblical scholars believe that uh, St. Luke, who says himself that he's setting out to write an orderly account based on eyewitness testimony, many uh, current reputable biblical scholars believe that St. Luke wrote the verses we hear this morning based on conversations he had with Mary herself as she shared her precious memories with him. And these memories are full of blessings. And these blessings are not only for Mary. These memories are full of blessings for all of us here today. After learning from the angel Gabriel that she would bear a child, Mary went to visit her aunt Elizabeth, who was herself six months along with a miraculous pregnancy, having conceived in her old age. And when Mary arrived at Elizabeth's home in the hill country of Judea, the unborn prophet John the Baptist leaped in the womb. He jumped for joy. He was already doing his job of pointing to Jesus. And filled with the Spirit, Elizabeth went on to proclaim three blessings. First blessing that Elizabeth proclaimed to Mary, Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you among women. Now think about that for just a little bit. Mary was not wealthy. Mary was not famous. Mary was not powerful. Mary was not important in any way in that society or culture. Mary was a poor girl from a village so small that some of the ancient maps from that time don't even show Nazareth on the map. It was that small and insignificant. It was a little village. If Mary had had an Instagram account, there would not be much for her to post under the hashtag blessed, to be sure. In fact, being pregnant before she was married was scandalous and even a dangerous situation for her, which may very well have been the reason why she made haste to go visit her Aunt Elizabeth in a neighboring town. And yet, Elizabeth says, blessed are you among women. Now, Mary is unique in the way that she is blessed. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But this memory is a blessing for all of us here today. Because it tells us that God chooses to bless people who are not the most obvious candidates for blessing. God calls people who are not necessarily important or wealthy or powerful. God notices and loves people who are not necessarily influencers. God blesses people even when they find themselves in less than ideal circumstances. And so we see that our struggling and often unnoticed lives are not unimportant to God. God blesses us too. God blesses you. And here is how God blesses you. He comes to you in Mary's child. Which brings us to the second blessing proclaimed by Elizabeth. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, she says. Elizabeth knew who Mary was carrying. She knew who was coming. She says this in no uncertain terms. This is what this term means that, that Elizabeth uses. Why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? Mary was carrying the Lord. She was carrying the Lord God himself. That's what this term means. That, that Elizabeth uses refers to God himself. And so Mary is uniquely blessed among women in that she alone is the mother of God. And here is the heart and the scandal and the wonder of Christianity that the Lord God who established the entire universe came into it as a cluster of fetal cells in Mary's womb. 
the creator of all that exists, came as a human creature, came as a baby. God came as a human being. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Blessed is the fruit of Mary's womb indeed. For by coming into the world in this way, God became Emmanuel, God with us. In all of our humanity, all of our frailty, all of our vulnerability, God has come to be with us. And then there's a third blessing. Elizabeth says to Mary, Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of the word spoken to her by the Lord. Martin Luther once preached on these uh, very verses, and in his sermon he mentioned that there were three miracles in this text that we hear today. He said the first miracle is that a virgin would conceive. He wasn't really too impressed with this miracle. He said it was a miracle, sure, but it wasn't that great of a miracle. After all, God created the whole universe out of nothing, so surely he can make a virgin conceive, so that's not all that impressive. The second miracle Luther points to is that God became a human being, which is a much bigger deal. Then the third miracle Luther identifies is that Mary believed it. Luther went so far as to say that this third miracle is the greatest miracle of all, that Mary trusted the word of God, that Mary had faith, that Mary trusted this promise. Blessed is she who believed, Elizabeth says. And this miracle continues to happen today. It is happening even right now as God speaks his word to us, stirring us to renewed faith, inviting us to believe, calling us to trust in his promises. What God conceived in Mary's womb is conceived today in your ears and in your hearts as God puts his word in there, telling you that he is near, nearer than you think, nearer than you sometimes feel. God has come to us in the Lord Jesus to forgive our sin, to show us his great love, to assure us that we belong to him forever. Blessed are you who believe. These memories of Mary and Elizabeth are among the most cherished and precious memories of the church. And whether you are young or old, a parent or childless, male or female, these memories are yours to cherish and to ponder. They've been handed down to us by Mary and Luke so that we all might delight in them, so that we might see the blessings that are there for all of us. And there are blessings here for all of us because these memories tell us of a God who chooses to work through people you wouldn't necessarily expect, even people like you and me. They tell us of a Lord who himself entered into the world through the womb of Mary so that he could come and be with us. They tell us that when we believe this, when we believe this word spoken to us by the Lord, we too are blessed indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. It is time for maybe not some jumping, but at least some standing for joy. Please stand as you're able as we sing our hymn of the day. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. 
joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. <coughs> And wonders one of his love. And now let us confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. <clears throat> for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the worlds to come. Let us now pray for the church, the world, and for all people in any need. Please join me in prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, and renew your church through the memories of your blessed mother. Be born anew in the hearts of your people as the word enters our ears and then our hearts. With John, let us leap with joy at your coming among us. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Lord Jesus, and bring peace to our world. Heal the divisions between and within nations and peoples. Protect those serving for the defense of our nation, partic particularly those who are far from home. Grant that all people would live secure and know your greatness to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Lord Jesus, and bless all children and parents. As we hear today of the unborn prophet greeting the unborn savior, we pray for all children in the womb that they would be healthy and safe. We pray for all expectant mothers, especially our sister in Christ, Mandy Seeley, who is mere weeks away from delivering her child. We thank you for the safe arrival this week of Leaute, Sella Andrews, Verna and Mike Morgan's granddaughter in the Netherlands. We pray also for all those whose longing for children has not been fulfilled. Fill every longing with the peace of your presence and the joy of being part of your holy family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, and bring healing to all who are sick or grieving, hope to those who are poor or struggling, and your loving care to all who feel lonely or unnoticed. May your choosing of Mary 
Remind us of your great love for the vulnerable, humble, and lowly of all times and places. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Lord Jesus, and bless our friends who are celebrating birthdays this week, including Sadie Harbaugh, Joan Minkler, Donna Reeb, and Mike McKee. With them, we rejoice in your gift of life. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Lord Jesus, to your people gathered here to worship you today. Work in us the great miracle of faith, that we would believe and trust in your promises and your presence. Bless us today that we would be a blessing to others as we bear your great love to the world. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with one another. All right, friends, a few announcements to highlight for you this morning. Uh, We have our last midweek Advent service coming up this Wednesday at noon and 6. Thanks so much to everybody who has helped out, pitched in, brought soup, brought bread, cleaned up afterwards. Uh, It's been a delight to be able to resume those services. One more this Wednesday. There's still, I think, some room for people to sign up for different things on the round table in the Narthex. So if you're interested in that, take a look at the sign-up sheets in the Narthex on your way out today. Friday is Christmas Eve. And we have three services that we will be offering on Christmas Eve. The four o'clock service is our family service. It's a brief service. The main focus of that service is the Sunday School Christmas program. Uh, We will be singing uh, Silent Night by Candlelight. Uh, There is nursery available for that service if they're really, really little ones. I think most kids can handle being in 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 the sanctuary for 45 minutes or so and watching the program. But we are offering the nursery uh, for those who wish to have that. Uh, We also have a 7 o'clock traditional service with communion, um, and that service will be live-streamed for those who are watching online. If you want to watch that service, that will be live-streamed, and we will have a nursery for the 7 o'clock service. Then we have an additional traditional service with communion at 10 p.m., where for that service there will not be nursery or or live-streaming. We will not be having a service on Christmas Day this year. Um, Because of the way the calendar falls with it being on a Saturday, we will definitely have Christmas Day services next year because they're on Sunday. So, um, and, and subsequent years after that, likely, we will be having them as well. Uh, just because the way it fell this year, we decided not to, uh, to do that. We will continue to celebrate Christmas, however, on the 26th, which is the Sunday, uh, and that is the deadline for your 2022 offerings. If you want those offerings to show up on your giving statement that you can use for tax purposes, they need to be into the counters next Sunday, the 26th, uh, so that we can process all of that information. Uh, So please be mindful of that. Your offering envelopes, if you uh, elected to have those, are on the table in the narthex. You can grab those out on your way out today. If you're watching online and would like to have us mail those to you, just call the church office and we can mail those offering envelopes to you easily. Lutheran Disaster Response has been on the ground helping those who um, have been devastated by the recent tornadoes in several states in in the middle of our country. Uh, If you'd like to help out with that, there's information on how you can contribute to Lutheran Disaster Response in your bulletin insert for today. You can take a look at that. Thank you to everybody who's helped with the Sharing Tree Ministry this year. Uh, Those gifts are due back today, so hopefully you remember to bring them back today because they need to be distributed both locally here in Burlington all the way down to to Stanwood. Um, If you, for some reason, didn't bring your gift in today, if you forgot or just weren't able to for some reason please contact the Lixells right away. If you're not sure who the Lixells are, call the church office first thing tomorrow morning uh, so that we can make arrangements and um, get all of that done. But thanks to everybody who took a tag and brought something back. Uh, We look forward to blessing people throughout Western Washington uh, with a a little token of of our faith uh, and blessing to others this Christmas season. All right, we continue now with our offering.
Savior and Lord, and prepare us now to receive him as he comes to us in the holy day. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> holy, holy. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, creator of heaven and earth. We praise you for the promises made to your people Israel as you led them out of slavery into the land of promise, giving them your law on Sinai's height. You promised through the prophets that the Messiah would come, the very branch of Jesse, before whom all nations would keep silent. Then at the appointed time you sent your beloved son, Jesus our Emmanuel, the key of David, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, by the power of the Spirit. He came to rescue the uprooted, to bring life to the lifeless, and voice to those who were without hope. On Calvary's heights, he gave his life to draw all people to himself and to your promise of mercy. We praise you for embracing us as the people who now dwell in the brightness of his glory. Send now your holy and life-giving spirit upon this bread of life and this cup of salvation, that we in this holy communion may be united to him who is our cornerstone, the one who gives us his very body and blood to sustain us with his forgiving love. With all the people of your promises, we await our Lord's final coming when we will share in that feast which shall never end. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Dear friends, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us now pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus comes to us now through bread and wine. Jumping for joy wouldn't be out of place. Come, for all is ready. <clears throat> Please be seated. Of God, you take away the sin.
the body of Christ given for you, Sam. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Emma. This is the body of Christ given for you, Drew. Aaron, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Connor. Matthew, this is the body of Christ given for you. Maddox, this is the body of Christ given for you. Matthew, the body of Christ is given for you. Shannon, this is the body of Christ given for you. Mia, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Shannon. This is the body of Christ given for you. Angela, this is the body of Christ given for you. Natalie, the body of Christ is given for you. Lucas, the body of Christ given for you. Dave, this is the body of Christ given for you. Peg, the body of Christ is given for you. Anita, this is the body of Christ given for you. Paul, this is the body of Christ given for you. Terry, this is the body of Christ given for you. Mike, the body of Christ is given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you, Joanne. Mary, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Kelly. You want to, oh, okay. <laughs> the body of Christ is given for you, Josh. This is the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you, Mark. Moiko, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you, Wendy. Ron, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ is given for you, Jan. Candy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Dave, this is the body of Christ given for you. Tom, this is the body of Christ given for you. Julie, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you, Ashley. Fran, this is the body of Christ given for you. Marty, this is the body of Christ given for you. Michael, this is the body of Christ given for you. Mandy, this is Christ's body given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. You are a beloved child of God, Alice. Rejoice and be glad. Have you are a precious child of God. Rejoice and be glad. Ryan, this is the body of Christ given for you. Tom, this is the body of Christ given for you. Dottie, this is Christ's body given for you. Jean, this is the body of Christ given for you. Donna, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you, Lauren. This is the body of Christ given for you. Andrew, you are a beloved child of God. Rejoice and be glad. 
Martha, this is the body of Christ given for you. Steve, this is Christ's body given for you. Sue, this is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Jeff, this is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace this day and always. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming to us through the sacrament of the Holy Supper. May your presence in our lives give us patience and peace in this holy season, and make us eager for your return when you will bring all the faithful into your heavenly kingdom. For you live and reign with the Father and Holy Spirit, one God. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, live in hope. Thanks be to God. Sam, do you want to put them out? Do you want to put them out? Yeah. You can blow these ones out. Don't use the yeah. thing on it. Yeah, it's better to blow them out.